everybody. I'm back and I wanted to share this article um, that's basically talking about how the lawyer is saying that there's no proof of his client, Nathan Sutherland, 36-year-old LPN, who is accused of raping a young woman in a vegetative state, how there's no proof that he is the criminal in this case. So as usual, I'm just going to read this article. And if you didn't see my previous video about the actual arrest and a little bit of more information about uh, Mr. Sutherland, please click on the previous video. I also have a playlist where I play the, I have the actual 911 call. It's about five minutes and a couple of other articles that I give commentary on concerning this case. So let's read this article. Okay, so it says, lawyer, no proof of nurse raped um, Arizona patient who had baby. And here you see his face right there. It looks like he has, I don't know if that's a lazy eye or something going on with his eye. One eye is open and one eye is shut. But this is the young man that they took the DNA from that implicated him in this crime. Okay, so let's start reading. A nurse who was supposed to be looking after an inc incapacitated woman at a long-term health care facility was charged Wednesday with raping her weeks after she stunned her caregivers and family by giving birth to a baby boy. Wow, that I, I know that had to be a real big shock. Nathan Sutherland, a licensed practical nurse, or LPN, has been arrested and charged with one count of sexual assault and one count of vulnerable adult abuse, according to court records. And I wish there was a way that they could determine how many times he actually had sex with her so he can get an account for each time that he raped her. But that's probably impossible. We owe this arrest to the victim. We owe this arrest to the newest member of our community, that innocent baby, Phoenix Police Chief Jerry Williams said. And there are the police chief and the others. They have a video that you can listen to their commentary. I would play it, but it keeps playing commercials, so I won't play it today. The surprise birth late last month triggered reviews by state agencies, highlighted safety concerns for patients who are severely disabled or incapacitated, or incapacitated and led to disciplinary actions and resignations of staffers and managers. Wow, I know about the one guy that got the leadership role. I knew he ended up resigning, but I didn't know that other people had resigned. So I have to look into that. It also prompted authorities to test the DNA of all the men who worked at the Hacienda Healthcare Facility. And see, this is another reason why I know I keep saying this, but I believe this wholeheartedly. I believe that they tried to deal with this on their own and this was not publicized at first because now we're seeing that not only did the CEO resign, but now you have some staffers and some managers. So that means that Something happened, and I believe that it was a big cover-up. Sutherland, 36, submitted his DNA sample under court order Tuesday, and the results came back a few hours later. Wow, that's fast. I thought it used to take weeks. Showing he was a match to the baby. He declined to speak with the with police and invoked his Fifth Amendment right rights, police spokesman Tommy Thompson said. And I guess, you know, I don't know how many lawyers I have listening to me. I guess that was the best thing he could have did was just to be quiet and get legal counsel at this point. Sutherland appeared in court Wednesday but did not enter a plea. A Maricopa County Superior Court Commissioner set a $500,000 cash-only bond. If Sutherland post bond, he would never need he, I mean, he would he would need to wear an electronic monitoring device. So a five hundred thousand dollar cash bond, cash only bond. Um, I didn't know. Is that in lieu of putting up property? I don't know. They talking about this has to be actual cash. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, and I don't deal with criminal, um, criminal, uh, criminal terminology like that. So if you do know, and you're watching this video. Please tell me what they mean by a $500,000 cash bond only, cash only bond. Defense attorney David uh, Gregan had asked for a lower bond on the grounds that Sutherland didn't, didn't have a criminal record. 
He described his family, he described his client as a family man with young children who has lived in Arizona since 1993. So he, so that goes to show you just because someone hasn't been arrested um, for something doesn't mean that they can't do criminal acts. You have a whole lot of people out here in the world that have been getting away with crimes and they do not have a criminal record, okay? And what's more appalling to this case is that he's a family man and he has young kids. You know, what would make him do that? But I digress. Let me keep reading. There's no direct evidence that Mr. Sutherland has committed these acts, Gregan said. I know at this point there's DNA, but he will have a right to his own DNA expert. So unless someone mixed the DNA up, this is this DNA belongs to him but I guess you know as his attorney you know he has to make sure his client's best interest is looked after so if that means getting his own expert to confirm that the DNA belongs to him then fine so be it. Gregan did not immediately return a message seeking comment. Investigators found that Sutherland had treated the victim and spent a lot of time with her yeah I bet according to a probable cause statement. Investigators believe Sutherland raped the patient sometime between February and April and probably was doing it much more than between that time. A former neighbor, Elsa Burr, said she lived next, door, next to the Sutherland, his wife, and four children for more than five years. She often saw the couple leave for church on Sundays and they would chat occasionally. I can't believe it, Burr said. He just told me he was a nurse and he liked his job. Yeah, he probably loved his job. He probably was on time. <laughs> he probably couldn't wait to get to his job. You know, I bet he did, taking advantage of that woman. But it's always the person you least expect, the one that's smiling and seemed friendly, you know, the one that seemed like the life is just perfect. They are the main ones that you find out are in some mess or into some criminal activity and it shocks you, okay? So this doesn't surprise me that his neighbor, she can't believe that he would do something like that. Most criminals, they, have a, they put on a facade, you know, so that people can see them a certain way. Court records indicate his wife filed for divorce seven weeks ago. A message left at the number listed for her was not immediately returned. Hacienda officials fired Sutherland after learning of the arrest. The company said it was troubled beyond words. Sutherland had passed an extensive background check. Again, if you're a criminal who has gotten away with crimes and you've just never been caught, your background is going to come back clean. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me and that his background check, his extensive background check came clean. Once again, we offer an apology and send our deepest sympathies to the client and her family, to the community, and to our agency partners at entry level, Hacienda said in a statement. And guess what, Hacienda? You're going to be paying for this, okay? They're going to hit you in the pockets for this. The family will if they decide to move forward with a lawsuit. The 29-year-old victim, while wow, 29, has been in a long-term care since age three, since age three, she's been in this condition and gave birth at the facility on December 29th. Employees said they had no idea she was pregnant. As her guardian, the woman's mother was required to submit, submit an annual report to the court that included results of a medical exam. The case has prompted the departure of dis or discipline of key figures at Hacienda Healthcare, including the CEO. The provider says one doctor who cared for the pregnant woman resigned and another had been suspended. Earlier stories had described the patient as being comatose or in a vegetative state, but her parents released a statement Tuesday disputing that character characterization. Okay, so they're saying that she wasn't in a vegetative state. They described her as intellectually disabled because of seizures in early childhood. While she doesn't speak, she has some mobility in her limbs, head, and neck. She also responds to sound and can make facial um, gesture, gestures. Okay, so she's alert. All right, so when I think of somebody in a vegetative state, and I'm not a doctor, if you're a doctor, make a comment, and you're watching this, it may have been that um, she... Um, uh, 
she's not in a vegetative state. Because when I think of somebody in a vegetative state, I think of somebody that's not moving. They're just there. But apparently she did have some type of movement and she could respond to things. So that clears that up a little bit. But still, she's in a vulnerable state. The family's attorney, John Michaels, said in a statement they knew about the arrest but did not want to comment. Thompson says he said he believes the baby has been released from the hospital. The woman's family said they will care for him. So this is the story that gives us a little bit more information um, about what was going on. And, you know, I, like I said, I will keep you updated. You know, I have a few more questions that I think I'm going to look into. And I thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.